Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to, um, Let's Talk to an Old Lady Simulator, also known as <laughs> Phoenix Wright Justice for All, everybody. For a sec, I was like, wait, did you forget the name of the game that we're it's playing? It's literally right in front of my face! Well, the no. way you were like, uh, I was like, oh my gosh. I was saying, uh, because I was trying to figure out, uh, what weird name to give it this okay. time. Anyhow, we're continuing Farewell My Turnabout Part 2 on Trial. We've got old bag on the stand, so yeah. Miss Old Bag, what was your post on that night? <laughs> okay. Jeez, are you serious? <laughs> Can you go one recording without <laughs> sneezing? I know it's that five seconds. <laughs> as soon as you started, I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> I was like, trying to <laughs> you got to do something about that. You're perpetually sick, apparently. No, I'm not. I have allergies. It's also the fall. So Which means nothing. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you don't have allergies, mister. So That I know of. I guess that's true. All right, it's not a big deal. Miss Wolfbag, what was your post on that night? The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help, I'll have you know. It was that look for that lead-headed samurai show. I even took out a few of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on. <laughs> Besides, that manager of the classes seemed to be well working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? Oh, you know, as you do. <laughs> there was something I was interested in finding out. Before. Something you were interested in? And just what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. Ugh. Ah, and Edgy, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? If this has something to do with the case, then you can append it to your testimony. It looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm. <laughs> did, the, did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's room the entire time? Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out. Oh, did you? Oh, then would, would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corrida's room? I have no idea! I was bored so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I kept quit keeping track of how old I really am. Well, that explains why! <laughs> Her age is unknown. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not recorded in the report. In any case, the witness then saw someone, correct? Dang, that means she could be anywhere between, like, a really old-looking 40-year-old and, like, 80. Okay, she's at least 65. Yeah. There's someone really coming out of Juan's child. room. Yeah. Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of Juan's room, it was. He was. Yes, he was. Ah, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh, I, what I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right on out now. <laughs> Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy, anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was on guard, man on guard, and he was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. You saw my client? Are you sure about that? Yes, he. Yes, he. Really? Annoying brat! When I said I saw someone, I saw that person! Well, clearly that doesn't always happen, yeah. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid a mess like last year, I should delve into this a little further. Yeah, um... The person's face, what the person was carrying, the person's clothes. Um... The clothes. Well, we know what the murder weapon is, and it got stuck in the in... victim, so probably whatever they're carrying is not important. Especially if, um, said what's-her-face lady set down her glass of tomato juice. Adrian. Adrian, that's right, her name. That was um, supposedly after this, though. Right. Maybe all of these work, to be honest. Please tell with the court about the man's face in more detail. You know, 
don't need me to tell you about his face. That soft, gentle look in his eyes and his effeminate lips. His right eye covered by his silky hair, his sparkling, shining teeth. Uh, his teeth were shining? Him. Well, he's shining all around in this week's pinup poster, dearie. This week's pinup? Why do you... I mean, I don't care how he looks in this week's issue. Please stay with what you saw that night. What? Ungar's face is the same no matter where it is, right, you whipper snapper? So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Hmm, it was not important. It was very important. It's probably very important. <laughs> I guess it really wasn't that important after all. Uh, Mr. Wright, do you know why we say time is valuable? If not, I suggest you learn. You've wasted three minutes of this woman's youth! That's more valuable than gold to me! And my intelligence seems to have reverted to that of a toddler. She may not remember things or be mistaken here and there, but I don't think she's lying. That's bad for us. Really bad. But that's how he the human mind is. It also has the tendency to jump off topic. She's strayed onto a few interesting side topics this time too, hasn't she? But that's what makes her a sweet old lady, right? That's because you're not the one who has to question her. I would not say she's sweet. No, not at all. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important? You don't really have to put it like that to get me to say. Mr. Wright, there is something much more valuable than a person's pride, and that is time. Please don't waste this court's precious time with your worthless questions. Yes, Your Honor. I think I just wasted his good favor. She may not- oh, never mind. That's what we've seen before. Um... What was the man you saw carrying? In which hand? His right or his left? Um... Ah, now this is a real mess. I mean, I can't be expected to answer such a vague question. Indeed, please be more specific with your question, Mr. Wright. S sorry What was the man you saw carrying in his right hand? Ah, he wasn't carrying anything in that hand. Then how about his left? Empty. Well, this whole thing has been a lot of nothing. So, Mr. Wright, was it important or not? So you're kind of under the impression that it was not. If there's nothing in their hands... Because he left the knife. They left the knife. They left the wine, the wine glass that had tomato juice in it. Um... That was after the murderer left. Right. Supposedly. Guitar... Did they steal the guitar? The guitar was left at the studio, so he literally okay, just so brought just the empty case. literally brought the empty case. Okay. Um... Well... Oh, Adrian we can also Andrews, look at the court records. Adrian Andrews was trying to go in there to find the suicide note, so it would be kind of weird that she doesn't have it with her. She could have it in her pocket, But though. here's the thing. Old Bag is basically saying Ongard came out of the hotel room, which in this case, this happened before Adrian walked in. Okay, supposedly. so supposedly... So the wine glass would not be there, and if the suicide note was in there, then it would still be in there. Right, so supposedly... Although I don't know why Juan would bring her suicide note with him to an awards ceremony when well, he only has to know. carry a suitcase with him. I don't know. Um, it's probably not important. It's not. Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are! Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing, that racing jacket. Ah, he was wearing that at the detention center too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> right. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Um... <laughs> well, he would have been dressed up, wouldn't he? As the Nickel Samurai? Not even as the Nickel Samurai, but... Oh, well, maybe. I'm imagining... He had to play the Nickel Samurai, for, the, the Nickel Samurai. for both but the show and the after show. Here's the deal, though. When you are a celebrity and you also have to, like, go to, like, the banquet and eat food. Like, when you're at the Tony Awards, you're not in your costume that you were just... They're also on not putting the on, like... Here's the thing. At the Tonys, if it's like, oh, Spider-Man the Musical, they wouldn't show up as Spider-Man and put on a Spider-Man show for people. That's essentially what happened here. 
He put on, he literally dressed as the Nickel Samurai. Everyone dressed as their TV show characters, and we were basically going to put on a show. And then they right. got their awards, and then he was going to do an after show, dressed as the Nickel Samurai, I thought with he the was, press I conference. I thought he was going to change back into, like, a suit of some kind. Great no, remember, people. remember the the press conference? Yeah, it was He was right. dressed as the Nickel Samurai, who he was supposed to be. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of weird, then, that he's not wearing right. that outfit. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but alright. Witness, please. Ah well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... He was wearing his flashy racing jacket. Honestly, it's all just for show. Well, <laughs> then that's a problem right there. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? What do you think? It's not like I've seen him in anything other than that horrible thing. I'm sure he was wearing it. She is so sure of herself that it's to the point of self-absorption. She may not remember things. Yeah, we, blah, blah, we've blah. seen that already. <laughs> All right. Well. So what piece of evidence should we present here? Uh, Do you think it's the press conference one? Go back. Either the press conference ticket or the steel. Go back. Is it Nickel Samurai? That's just a poster. Oh, that's just a poster. I thought it was more. Yeah, never mind. It's probably the press conference ticket. Oh, it's not. Oh, that's right. Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It clearly uh, contradicts the... Uh, I thought... No. <laughs> huh. Alright, think about it from a different angle. What proves he was dressed as the Nickel Samurai? A picture of him in it? No. <laughs> uh... What's the picture that's to the right of it? Crime photo? Probably that, because the other dude's in his outfit, so... That's, that doesn't prove he was in his outfit, though. Okay. What's below it? Knife. Oh. No. Oh, yeah. That would make sense, because... Yeah, it's... it was found in his samurai pants. Darn it, now I'm gonna... In or on? <laughs> Miss old bag? What? Don't say my name for no reason! Do you know what this is? Ah! It's button number two on the jam and it just cost you! <laughs> now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance! Button give it here! Give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this! <laughs> wow, she really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. Ugh. This button was discovered on Mr. Ongard's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was that rascal on guard. It was caught up in the pleats of his Nickel Samurai Hakama pants. See? See? And on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness? Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination, but just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Matt on guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear! If I wore the trendiest dress, then maybe you think I'm the most gorgeous one ever, but no, I have to put wearing this ridiculous outfit. You agree this outfit is hideous, right? I got a tape recorder stuck to my neck. Let me tell you why it's heavy. So heavy, I wish I could have switched to CDs years ago. But no, I'm keeping the dream alive for the kids, and I have to rub me a smile on my face. Then you now take a look in the mirror. Your clothes are about as entry interesting as the documentary. Now take a tip over time for that, you He's got style. Oh my god. <laughs> now hold on your tongue still there for one second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. Ongard the man, but Mr. Ongard the Nickel Samurai? Well, that is completely different. Well, but when you think about it, oh my that's gosh, the her same outfit. thing she did last time, too, in the last It is. Like well, okay, but if that's the case, any old schmo could just, like, put a paint on their face and be like, I'm the Nickel Samurai! It's a mask! Oh, I thought it was paint. No, put, 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 put up the pillow poster! That's paint! That's a mask! That looked like paint! That is definitely he a mask, He also looks Marty. like a Mega Mare villain. 
It's what? the troll man! It's, it's no. his face because he looks like a robot. The only one he bit. even remotely resembles is Tengu Man. Who's Tengu also man. weird. Tengu Man. They're really one and the same anyway. Miss Old Bag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Edgy Poo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth thinking about. Just say it's important and agree with me for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Ha! <laughs> Alright, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. Witness testimony, who I saw. Well, if it's a mask, then it could just be literally anyone. Yeah. On guard. On guard. Yes! Now I remember! The Nickel Samurai! That's right! It was the Nickel Samurai that I saw! See, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must oh. have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing well, Morwan. Well then, this is simple. I, Adrian Andrews could have worn it. Because... The dude was like, oh no, man, man, I had no idea it was doing a post-ceremony show. But, like, if Adrian Andrews was in the costume and then was gonna, like, confess all this <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, you think Adrian was gonna dress as the yeah, Kill Samurai and could totally do the confession be. thing for I don't know. It could totally be. <laughs> I, Especially if he has, like, a voice modifier, modifier thing, then yeah. Hey, <laughs> dude. I don't, I don't know if the Nickel Samurai no, sounds not, like that. No, not like that, but I'm saying, like, uh, <laughs> think... Like the Darth Vader voice. Darth Vader, yeah. Think like Darth Vader or um, Bane. Does Bane, Bane. Does Bane have a voice changer? I don't remember. Bane is a voice changer. Okay. <laughs> I I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Yeah. Don't be a bad little boy, thinking such rude things. What's rude about? But but the possibility does exist. Ah, Yannins today! I told you there is no way it was anyone else! How do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. Very funny. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. I can't believe she didn't bring any donuts with her. <laughs> Testimony 2 of 20. <laughs> no, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I am actually kidding you. <laughs> Maybe it's like out of five. Would you please get on with your testimony? Watch your language, young man! What sort of tone is that to take with an elder? My youthfulness isn't what it used to be, so you should forgive me for everything. If you keep on barking at me like that, I'll start singing at the top of my lungs! Uh, what? A striking figure by the sea, standing all alone is he! He's the Nickel Samurai! <laughs> She's actually singing. Someone help my poor ears. Mr. Ezroth, can you please do something about this racket? <laughs> Witness, I'll give you a piece of gum later if you'll be good and stick to just the facts. Okay! You promise, right? Right, I'll be sending the bill for the chewing gum to your it's office like at a later date. <laughs> Remind me to send you a thank you note later too, Edgeworth, old chum. <laughs> a, okay, a pack of gum is literally... No, a stick of gum. gum is probably like... Two cents. But it's completely an Edgeworth character to do something that petty. <laughs> I saw the nickel cent. I need my two cents. He's the person who, like, if he does not get exact change at, like, the cash register or whatever when he goes shopping, he's gonna, like, lose his mind. Be a little more careful with your testimony, please. Not too long ago, you said he was wearing his racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago? Then let me ask you this. When were you, were itty bitty? What was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, Webber Snapper? My dream, huh? Well, I, uh, wanted to be a Judge Wackner hero of the public's court. So what? See? And look where you are now! You're not Judge Wackner, are you? Are you? Who's Judge Wackner? I don't know. Maybe that's the name of the main judge, dude. <laughs> well... I bet there's a winning no. for him. What I said earlier, who puts any weight into things like that? <laughs> the now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Since when did court become theatrics over testimonies? All that matters is that man inside that costume. Isn't that enough? It would have been convenient for him to wear his costume. <laughs> yeah, no duh. <laughs> and why would that be? That way, no one can see his face, of course. But there's still no advantage for him that I can see. In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out all the more. 
You are such an annoying child, you know that? You disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it! Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. Probably is. Maybe he took a nap in between, <laughs> like, what's he, his he, face? Yeah, he did. He was... I think he said he was taking a nap anyways. No, no, no he just no, said he was in his room, I guess. Was there anyone else eating, scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony show? Eating the bone. <laughs> well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the Jammin' Ninja? Of course it included him! That's why On Guard came out of Dear Juan's room. I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyway... He must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. <laughs> so let me ask you one last time. The person you saw, it really was the Nickel Samurai? As showy as ever! Haven't I been saying that from the very beginning?! Can I throw in the towel yet? Hmm... You don't need to think too hard on this one. Huh? There's a contradiction in her testimony and it's sitting in plain sight. The question is whether what that contradiction means for us. Well, I have to figure out what you're talking about first, but okay. I keep tuning out and then I'm like, oh wait, Mia's talking. <sighs> Let me go back to that. Uh, you don't want to tune out in this case, I'm just gonna no, say that. No, you don't. Why does she have no pupils? It's an anime thing. You wouldn't understand. It's not anime. That is an anime thing, though. Alright, I'll say it's this statement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on. Mm -hmm. He must have worn the Nickel Samurai costume. Wait, but if we say he wasn't, then that means... It's stupid. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> well, because then that means we spent all this time proving nothing. I mean, well, that, that, that happens well, okay. sometimes. So, he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. Is there, like, a note that's like, hey, I was eating steak no. at this time? No. Come on, that would be so much easier. Um, that was before this. Okay, look at both of the autopsy reports. There, are, Okay, there's the suicide oh, yeah. reports and then the autopsy. Strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Okay, that doesn't really help. Um... Okay, yeah. Yup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> he's got such a weird bronze hand. <laughs> That's like, he's like, has the thin hand. Oh yeah, I sort of. Oh, hey, dude. Um... Magazine clipping? That's just about Adrian Andrews' gossip. Oh, that's Andrews the Adrian gossip. Andrews gossip. Uh, Hotel Guy now? How would that do I don't doing? know! I don't know! Is it just simple and I'm overthinking this? Probably. Probably. Let me look at the wine glass. No. Crime photo. Crime time. Crime time. Crime time. Crime time. Crime time. Crime time. Um, buttons is missing. Is it literally the same thing again? No. Oh. Guitar case? Water. No. The knife? Why would you think that? Because he's wearing a gigantic bronze arm and so you wouldn't have any fingerprints? Oh, okay, good. Yep. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Even Edgeworth. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I am driving at. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? If Mr. On Guard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Oh, that's right! The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. 
And why would he do something like that to leave his prints on the murder weapon? There's no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Oh, yeah! You talk to your bitter rival! For fun! Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm. Hey, Jim, how was your shift today? It was fine. Blech. You know, like, no one's gonna talk to Jim if Jim's, like, the dude who got the promotion. <laughs> and you can't, you're trying to, like, get in on that. No, Jim's not gonna talk to you. <laughs> hmm, but the murder did still take place. It's well known that the defendant and the victim had bad blood between them. Hmm, yes, I have heard of that. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight, Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intentions of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with his theory? There are no problems, there's a contradiction. Think about it one more time. <laughs> Does he have any... Does he have any intention of killing the victim? I have no idea. I don't know his brain. But... Well, th just think about the evidence we have. Oh, I'm just gonna go to, uh, Juan's room and eat steaks together. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing Okay, so, as you're spacing... You know what I mean? <laughs> that's actually exactly it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like... Okay, this ah, is... I can't see any real problems with his theory. But if you let Edgeworth's theory stand then we're one very large step closer to a guilty verdict. Look at the court record again and take another shot at it. Yeah, I just have to think about it one more time. Mr. Wright, please make your decision soon. <laughs> also, I feel like the knife, like, with the gigantic hand, mm -hmm. like, it would be pretty obvious if you walked down the hall. Okay. Mm, I think I need a little more time on this one. Oh, really? That's it? Okay, that's stupid. <laughs> This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. Wh what are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ongard was the killer, if that's the case. I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. The knife! My attorney's bad! Yeah, now that I've remapped the hotkeys, I'm always doing the yep, other ones. Yep. Naturally, you point to the one piece with the least value, but with such vigor. Enjoy your energy while you can. Humans don't live forever. Neither do lawyers. Are they so, is he implying that, like, lawyers are not humans? <laughs> you sure like to think you can bluff your way out of Phoenix, don't you? Phoenix, pay attention. Let's pretend for a second that Mr. Ongard is the murderer. Now, from that angle, if he didn't have a murderous intent from the very beginning, then that means that there is a certain ob like object that shouldn't be at the crime scene, right? A certain thing? What certain thing? How are you doing over there? Busy collecting your thoughts? Alright, let's give this one more try, and with even more spirit this time! <laughs> yeah! Christmas spirit! This knife. This was used by Mr. Ongard at dinner. Y yes we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm... Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. I thought Edgeworth was gonna be like, they wanted to share steak. Yeah. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, and there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Makes sense. Why would, like, Ongard be like, like, chuck the guy to death, be like, okay, now to stab him with a knife with my fingerprints. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because well, he literally kind of dumb. That's true, but... Let me call my publisher! Okay, even he wouldn't do something that phenomenally stupid. <laughs> yeah. No, if anything, he would probably, like, be on the verge of killing him and be like, Wait, let me check my manager. Yo, manager, can I kill this guy? <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. I do like I this just objection. I wish Pearl could be Pearl, though, and be like, OBJECTION! 
<laughs> like, and just, like, have it She could have me a phase objection <laughs> voice. Objection! And it would be great. Oh, yeah. order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To hide the murder method to frame Matt on guard. To frame! Yeah, but we gotta be stupid. It's to hide the way in which the murder was carried out, of course. M more of your nonsense! Take another good look at the autopsy report. The victim actually died from strangulation. The killer tried to hide this method by stabbing a knife into the victim's chest. But doesn't the autopsy admit that the cause of death was strangulation? Well, yes, the real cause of death was easily discovered. Then I'd say the knife did a terrible job of concealing this fact. <laughs> At least we had a small penalty. And that laugh doesn't do a very good job of concealing your error either. Mr. Wright, I will ask you one more time. <laughs> it's to frame my client, Mr. Ongard, of course. To frame? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Grrr. Witness! <laughs> Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy? Grrr. Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Ongard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that! Look, I was waiting around in front of your doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai? She's waiting for one! Alright then, who were you waiting around for then? Hmm, that's top secret to anyone outside of security. Cyclops appear in court. Choo-choo-choo! <laughs> it's kind of weird that Cyclops don't appear in court, but I guess that would make it too easy to see what to present stuff on. Yeah, it would also be like, okay, do you know the real villain? <laughs> <laughs> There's like ten, and then it's like, well, I mean, we can figure this out really quickly. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Corrida, am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha! The way you think you are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. What were you waiting for? <laughs> amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corrida. Maybe... Phoenix, maybe the old bag was waiting around for that person. Hmm, if it's who I think Mia's hinting at, it's certainly possible. I thought she was going to be waiting around for, like, kind of the same reason Lada was. For the for, gossip. Like, the between... gossip, where Lada's like, Hooey! I bet you I could catch a chin hook! Or, like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> catching the picture. Um, yep. Yeah, versus, and I feel like old bag could have also been doing that. Like, <laughs> oh, I need to see the scandal. Miss old bag? You were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? <laughs> so you think it is... Adrian? Yeah, I mean, who else could it be? <laughs> you were waiting for yourself! What are you talking about, Phoenix? She couldn't have waited until the next cent- She could have waited until the next century and this would never have happened. Ouch! Busted. Just there's no fooling her. You two! What do you think you're doing flirting in my courtroom? <laughs> we weren't doing anything like that. Honest. Well, back to the drawing board on this one. I don't know, but how does she know... Adrian? Uh, I guess I guess she was like, Oh, and this person! What a crazy... whatever! Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ongard's manager. B but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm, hmm. Ha, huh, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. <laughs> then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews? Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hmm. Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff. W witness? What in the world are you- Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. 
I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. Tabloids. <laughs> so that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. What if Old Bag and Lotta work together? That would be hysterical. <laughs> but, but what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this, however I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then, witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready! This is gonna take the wind out of you, young'uns! I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. Is that a fake gun, by the way? Yes, it's not a real gun. <laughs> not like, pow pow, I'm saying like a fake gun that doesn't actually shoot, as opposed to a fake gun that's like, oh no, I got hit with nerf gun, like, uh, that's a little ambiguous. I do think it's literally just spins. It's like those things okay. at Disney, like, Dring! Oh yeah, where you have, like, Tinkerbell and then, like, flowers. But, and but, it's, it's, like, but it is ambiguous because when she uses it, like, at the beginning on the judge, he's like, oof! But, oh, okay. but I feel like they would acknowledge I think it was that. more, like, surprising. Like, Maybe. oh, what is this? That on guard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? What is she gonna do? Is she gonna go lecture them? Oh, you youngins can't do that! <laughs> the defendant set this manager? What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip! And this isn't, isn't their saying, the truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Let's hope nobody brought their children to court again. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right! On guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth! Well, as the old saying goes, you've gotta burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Danger zone! <sighs> Secret information. And that's actually where we're gonna end the episode off for today, because... I think this might be her last testimony, but we still have a lot of court left, and I don't okay. really want to continue with these, like, 50-minute episodes, so... Yeah, me either. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We will be finishing up Old Bag as a witness. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.